right. So all I'm doing here is I kind of want to go through real quick before uh, I do my testimony. I want to uh, kind of what happens my first CR. So when I first walked into CR, I had some luggage. And that person, yep, I had, that's it, that's it, I had. So, hi, my name's Matt, uh, welcome to CR. Uh, I noticed you're carrying a brick there. Is that your brick? That is your brick, yeah. Well, if you look over here, I have a brick too, very similar to that one. But here at CR, we like to help people carry their bricks. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, so, so, you know, when you come here, it's an open, you want to be open and free, and you ask people to help you carry your bricks, and what's that? Yes, I will help you carry your brick, absolutely, but if you notice, if we walk over here and look at my brick, very similar to your brick, I don't know exactly what your brick's all made of, you don't know what mine's made of, but I tell you, if you get to my brick, you've got to go through the Word of God, now that's where we're at. Now, you can set your brick down, and we can let God take control of this brick, or you can hold on to your brick, which I hope you don't want to do that. Now, I'm not saying you do that tonight. You set it down your brick that tomorrow you're not going to have another brick. But if you keep coming back, those bricks are going to get lighter and lighter. So I'm going to leave it up to you. You take the choice. Do you want to hold on to your brick, or do you want to keep all hold of it? That's, that's your choice. And we'll set her down and cover it with the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's kind of what I want to do. This is my first CR experience, so I appreciate it. Thank you. So, all right, let me get started here. Well, before I do, I guess I need to uh, thank everyone for bringing in uh, good food and everything. That was awesome. Anthony. Way to set it off. I don't where to go. I don't know, right there. <laughs> Thank you for starting it off like that. That was great. Uh, so here we go. I want to open up with prayer real quick. We'll do this again. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to share my recovery story. Through your grace, I am able to stand here today. Please allow my words to glorify you. And I pray that our story will uh, touch others and bring everyone closer to you and your will. And in this, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Matt. I'm a firm believer that struggles with alcohol, anger, and addictive behaviors. Amen. I was born to a loving mother and father. At four years old, uh, my mother passed away unexpectedly from complications with her, her liver. My dad raised me, my older brother, and my sister by himself. We attended a private Catholic school. This is where I learned to fear God. My dad worked very hard a lot of hours of support to keep our family together. To this day, I am truly amazed that he was successful and raised us four kids. He is truly one of my heroes. Growing up without two parents, I never uh, saw how a husband would treat a wife or how a mother and father would, were supposed to raise a family together. Uh, being brought up by a single parent home, my siblings had a huge part in my upbringing. My sisters would sometimes resent the fact that they had they couldn't be out with their friends because they had to stay with their little brother. Without an adult around, I was exposed to a lot of behaviors that a kid my age probably shouldn't have been through, exposed to. But through all this, my family is still close today and supports me in my recovery. And I thank you, Jesus, for that. Growing up, I had watched my family drink excess excessively at family reunions. I had watched my brothers and his friends as they drank, and my first drunk was at 12 years old. My friends and I gathered what little money we had and had an older guy buy us beer. I knew it was wrong, but I thought it was normal. So my friends and I snuck under that railroad tr trussel and I chugged three beers, and that feeling was great. From that day forward, I tried to get drunk every weekend. With my focus on alcohol, I worked. <clears throat> I never worked real hard to become a great student in school. I would keep my grades up just high enough to be eligible for sports. My senior year, a kegerator was installed in my bedroom. Boy, was I the cool kid in school. That was important to me for some reason. Uh, this is when the evil one really started to take control. After high school, getting drunk just wasn't enough. So I started experiencing 
experimenting with other drugs, marijuana, coke, crystal meth, any drug I could get, I came across, I would try. I would party every night and, uh, just to support my habits. At the age of 25, I was bell bellied up at a bar when a beautiful woman came in and sat down next to me. We talked that whole night, and I can remember telling God if he let me marry this woman, I would stop doing the hard drugs. <laughs> I'm still amazed that uh, God answered that prayer. After three years, uh, surprisingly, she and I married. I did stop using hard, hard drugs, well, for the most part. I still drank and smoked weed every day, and I thought I had everything under control. January 19, 2004, my wife gave uh, birth to my first son. I was so excited to have that boy star athlete. Uh, God had a different plan. The day after bringing him home from the hospital, his blood sugar dropped to zero. This caused two dead spots to form, develop on his brain. This was devastating to my wife and me. I was determined to find out why this happened to my son. We sued the hospitals, the doctors, uh, everyone, anyone to, who failure to properly care for my son. Although, although the jury found them guilty of insufficient care, he was rewarded nothing. I blame God, my wife, the hospital, the doctors for this tragedy that happened to me. <sighs> Filled with self-pity, I used my son's disability to dr get drunk more and more. I would even brag about being an alcoholic. Using alcohol, alcohol as a, a coping mechanism, I would drink every day and stay out all night on weekends. Any excuse I could come up with, I would stay away from home. I did this for years. And during this time, God bless, was still blessing me. He blessed me with a healthy son and a beautiful, healthy daughter. Although I was filled with anger, resentment towards anything and everyone, I thought I was in control. I was a functioning alcoholic and I was advancing at work <coughs> where, where I would have to work longer hours. I got an advancement. This caused me to uh, be away from home even more. But I still spent all my free time staying out late, all night on weekends, and drinking until I couldn't even function. Well, this left my wife, my wife uh, alone at home to raise our three children. I was working third shift at the time, and when I got off work, I had the house to myself. I would stay up all morning long and drink a fifty whiskey until it was gone. I would try to I would try to sleep when my family was home. But I was there, but I was absent in their lives. Finally, alcohol abuse and the lack of sleep caused me to lose my job. One night at work, I was caught sleeping. I lied about it, and I also called off work and used my son's disability as an excuse so then I could go out and get drunk. That's when I started to think maybe I wasn't in control. I was failing as a father, as a husband, and at this point, I didn't care. The only thing I wanted in life was that next drunk or that next high. My friends even start to become concerned. I thought to myself, who are they to judge me? They have their own problems. At one point, my wife begged me to stop drinking. So just to get her off my back, I told her I would quit for six months. I made it almost five. After that, I started drinking again. Only this time I was hiding it from my family and, my, and I was hiding it. I was still failing at home, and it wasn't hiding my drinking very well. My middle son was losing respect to me day, day after day. When I would try to talk to him, he would look at me and say, Oh, Dad, you're just drunk. I blame this disrespect on my wife. She was the reason why, why he acted this way. I was quick to anger. I would lash out hateful words towards anyone that was around. My wife told me she was done asking. If I didn't stop drinking, she was leaving. This angered me so much, I verbally abused her in a way that, that uh, no one should even be spoken to, especially someone you love. So in August of 2017, my wife made the brave decision and got her children out of that toxic situation. I had nothing in control. <clears throat> I finally, uh, 
I thought finally now I could live the life that I wanted to live without her and the kids nagging me. I quickly fell into it, fell deep into drugs and alcohol. I was now living alone, spending limited time with my kids, and I was realizing this wasn't the life I was meant to lead. Now I was drinking at home alone, scared, wondering what I was supposed to do with my life, spending money on drugs and alcohol, the bills just quickly piled up. One night after dropping the kids off to their mom, I came home and the power had been shut off at my house. I grabbed what little, little beer I had in the fridge and took a drive. The devil was now in complete control. I drove around and I reflected on my life. I was ashamed of the person I had become. Not knowing where to go or who to turn to, I shouted, God, please, please give me a sign of what you want from me. At that exact moment, a friend of mine, John, drove past and turned into a parking lot. I knew that he was a devoted Christian and this was the sign I just cried out for. I pulled, pulled behind him and I got out and I asked him if he had time to talk to me. He greeted me with open arms and we sat on that tailgate and he prayed for me. I cried, he prayed, I cried more, we prayed together. This was when I made the decision to put God in control of my life and ask for forgiveness. I went back to that dark house with no power, but I knew there was a new power in my life and that was Jesus Christ. He was now in control. For it is God who works in you in according to his good purpose, Philippians 2.13. The next day I woke up confused, scared, yet I didn't really feel alone. I knew I wanted something more, I wanted more of this Jesus stuff. Uh, a few months back, uh, my wife gave me a piece of paper with some phone numbers on it. She got from this lady that was showing her houses. This lady told my wife, if, uh, if your husband needs help in recovery, have him call one of these numbers. This, this paper was still hanging on my fridge. I wasn't sure whose number I was gonna call, but I was calling one of them. Amazingly, the number I called was my cousin Luke's. This, is a, this was a conversation only the Holy Spirit can make happen. I explained going, what I was going through and he told me in God's time, he can make everything right. I didn't like to hear it in God's time. It's, it's what it is at that time, I didn't want to hear it. I wanted it now, of course, but it's true. In God's time, things do get better. Uh, he told me about this recovery group called Celebrate Recovery. And he also gave me a few more numbers to call if I needed to call someone. And he had, he had invited me to come to the next CR meeting that next Tuesday night. The next few days, I was looking for someone to share this new finding in Jesus. So I was scrolling through my phone, but I was struggling to find numbers of people that didn't drink and were firm believers in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> there was only one number that fit both that criteria. This was my brother-in-law, Caleb. So I gave him a call. And from that point forward, God has blessed our friendship to the next level. We now talk or text almost every day and support each other in faith in Jesus. He and I lean on each other in times of need and really count on each other as accountability. Thank you. Uh, from John pulling over in the parking lot to Cass, wherever she's at, giving my wife that paper when he was the lady showing houses, to Luke's number on my fridge, to Caleb's number in my phone. I had to ask myself, who is in control? This is way too perfect. It could only be God. That following Tuesday, I went to celebrate my first Celebrate Recovery meeting, ready to grow closer to God and load all these mixed emotions I had running through my head. My first CR small group, the men were quoting scripture and proclaiming their success in the recovery through Jesus Christ. I immediately wanted what they had. They had a true relationship with Jesus. I kept going back week after week, learning more and more how I too could have that relationship with Jesus. The first thing I learned is that I'm not in control and powerless to the will of God. Principle one, realize I am not God. I admit that I am powerless to control, to control my tendency and to do what is wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. Happy are those who are spiritually poor, Matthew 5, 3. Through CR, I have been able to accept the changes in my life. I am so grateful for my CR family. 
I now have a place where I can talk about all my hurts, ha habits, and hangups. A safe place where I won't be judged for what I have done. A place where I'm not alone in recovery. A place where I, I can, there are people I can count on and people that can hold me accountable. Also a place where I can he start helping others with their challenges. Ecclesiastics 4, 9 through 10. Two are better than one because they have good reward in their toil. For if one falls, the other can lift up his fellow. Celebrate Recovery has helped me grow closer to God, uh, to the man that God wants me to be and further from the man that I was. One of, this, one of the steps that was essential in this process was the 12, 12 steps of the step study. Through the step study, I learned about uh, my relationships, myself, and that God has always, always been there for me. I am so grateful for my CR leader, Tim. He was there week after week, walking me through each step. At the beginning, I had mixed emotions if I was gonna be able to finish this. Then I started working the steps, and then I knew there's no way I would be able to finish this. <laughs> I had to call my sponsor every night. Almost every night I would call him. He would listen to my worries, encouraging me to keep working. Most of the time, Luke's words were encouraging, but some of the times they're that kick in the rear that I just needed to keep me going. Thank you, Luke. Once I finished the step study, I was able to see who I am when the devil is control in control and who I am when Jesus is in control. And I do like when Jesus is in control a lot better. Principle three, continue, continue, consciously choose to commit all my life and will over to Christ and care of Jesus Christ. Happier than me, Matthew 5.5. 5. After months of putting God's will in front of mine, my wife started to see the changes in me. She had made another brave decision and moved, moved back home. My kids started respecting me more. The shattered little pieces of my life were starting to be put back together. Thank you, Jesus. Our life is much better now, but we still have our challenges, and I still need to still need CR to this day. The one thing that my family does have is a sober dad that loves them and is there for them in their time of need. I still lean on prayer, God's word, my CR family, the 12 steps, the eight principles, just to help, help keep God in control of my life. I would like to encourage anyone here today that is struggling with any of their, their life to just turn it over to God's will. I can encourage you to get a sponsor, get some phone numbers, get into the recovery program, and it'll work. And remember, you are not alone, and that God has always got your back. Thanks for letting me share. Amen.